The three biggest mistakes you make grilling a pork chop. Number one, you bought that little old thin dinky looking pork chop. Number two, you throw it directly on the fire. And number three is you're overcooking it to death. Stick with me. In this video, I've got tips to make you the grill master. Look at them bad boys right there. That is what I call a pork chop. Inch and three quarter thick, marbling in there. They're so inexpensive. $7.65 for both of these. So we're showing you how to fix a really inexpensive meal, but I'm gonna show you two ways to grill these. And ooh, I'm gonna pair them up with a special sauce for each one. And they are so good, cause I think sauce brings out such a great flavor in pork. All of it's gonna have a little sweetness and a little smoke to it. Hey, but stick around, we got a bonus. We're gonna do you a grilled asparagus to pair with it with a lemon butter sauce. But before we go any further, one of the things I think that is most important when you're cooking pork is to not undercook it, but so many people overcook it, they do. I rely on Chef's Temp to always make sure that I got that pork to right where I desire that temperature to be, and we're gonna do that today at 160. These things will never let you down, folks. You've seen me use them. They are such a great tool. We thank them for being a sponsor of ours, and we finna grill us up some pork. Now, when you're going in there and you look in that butcher case and you see some pork, biggest mistake, the biggest mistake that you can make is pick up them little bitty thin pork chops. I mean, you can put them up here, you can read the eye chart at the eye doctor. <laughs> them things are so thin and you cook them to death. Buy you a substantial amount of weight to a pork chop. Check this out one and three quarters inch thick. Isn't that right, Cletus? Cletus says he is a pork chop expert, but look for you some marbling in that pork chop. It's just like steak. Pork is gonna have marbling, it is. You can see the fat rind that comes around this one right here, this chop, not very thick as it is on this one. Now, I would prefer just a little more on there, but if you get too much, always take your knife and score that just a little because you know when you cook a pork chop and it's got a big old piece of rind fat or even a steak sometime will do that if it's thin, they'll curl up. Well, that's because that, that fat is shrinking, it is losing weight, and it will cause it to curl. So always make sure, I always used to say, this is the right amount of fat on a steak, this is too much. Let me give you a little buying tip when you're walking up to that butcher case and you see a big old ribeye in there or a big old pork chop. You know, rind fat to me is something that you don't need a whole lot of, but you sure need some. Always go by this method. Learned it a long time ago when I was in a meat lab. Not this much, no. About the thickness of your finger is just about right, but this much is too much. Not that much, but the thickness of your thumb. I don't wanna see that back fat so big and round through there that you're paying for just extra weight, but we do need it for the flavor. Now I think right off this morning, it's a beautiful morning. God has blessed us with some cloud cover. I think we'll mix up a margarita, Shan. You want to? Yeah. No, really folks, get you one lime. Lime juice, you've heard me say it so many times, is a natural tenderizer. You're not gonna taste the lime juice, but the acidity from the lime is gonna break down connective tissue in the meat, which is gonna make it more tender. So give it a little squeeze on that side. Rub it in gently. Cletus says we're doing a really good job. Get it on this side, Cletus. Rub that one in. Change participants. And then I'm gonna use our original seasoning on there. It's got also got a little citrus base to it. What have I always told you when cooking steak? People under season, over cook. Now to me, pork doesn't take as much seasoning as a steak does. So we're gonna go just a tad lighter, turn her back over. But I need you to get these edges too. If you got them paper thin ones and you made that mistake, do not take them out of the ice box. Call Pizza Hut, okay? Because <laughs> them things are gonna burn up. If you're gonna cover them, don't cover them with aluminum foil, okay? Cover them with plastic wrap or something like that, just where we can leave that covered up where nothing can get to it. If Cletus is in your house, put it up here. That is Cletus Height approved, ain't it Cletus? You will not see them again. But I'll meet y'all back at the fire. We'll get her to going. Welcome back to the cooking challenge, yes. Right here on my right, we have the Legacy Grill, straight from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hasty Bake Corporation looking to do her stuff and to prove to her idol, 
the master of fire, the queen of all the heat. She is Bertha, our wood stove, and she will burn the hair off your legs at any time you get close. We're going to take the eyes out of her. First, we're going to start with the legacy we are. Now, I have got it with some oak and mesquite already in there, but folks, I need a little more smoke coming out of there, so I split me a good piece of red oak off here this morning. Throw that in there, and this one was a bonus here. And if you're ever thinking, hey, I don't know where they're getting this stuff or what they're using, it's always down there below in the little links. You'll be able to find it. So, coals are on this end, right? Ain't nothing down here. What do we call that? Cletus, do you know? Cletus is an indirect pork chop heat. Good job, Cletus. So, and here comes contestant number one. We're going to set him right down here on this end. There's a little dab of sizzle, not much. Shut the lid. We're going to let that smoke just drift through there and come back and just give it a great smoke bath. We're probably going to cook that till it gets to about 145. The reason I like this method is this pork chop is so thick and when we can start it down there on that end, it's going to let that temperature gradually rise, gradually rise till we get that center nearly cooked to where we want it. Then we can slap it on a hot fire over here and just give it the color we need, get it done. Sort of a foolproof method it is. Well, while well, that's cooking long over there on the hasty bake, we're gonna go ahead and make the sauce that we're gonna put on that contestant we are. And we started with six minced garlic. And we're gonna use about a cup of honey in here. A Little bit of soy sauce. It's what I call a honey garlic sauce, really, in a way. A little bit of ground mustard, black pepper. This'll be on contestant number one. We're gonna reach that temperature over there of 140 degrees, and then we're gonna throw it on a hot licking fire we are. Well, we've been on about probably 30 minutes, I would say. Probe that, we're at 139, so we added us some more firewood down here because I want a really hot licking fire. That has been on that side the entire time we started, so we want to turn that side over, get it over here, get it right on them flames, and let it go to coming up there and doing some goodness. Now, I'm gonna let that get good and hot over here above this fire before we ever start to baste this because I just want to give it a good covering of that sauce. We got to come up just a little to a temperature of 160s. See it, think we're taking a shower with a pork chop, but we're not fussing at the rain, folks. We need it, so hang on, we'll be right back. back we are had about what they would do at a baseball game a rain delay yes we did but oh it was so nice i sit over there in that tp with them pups it was good to watch it rain the second method we're going to do is something really that i started doing a long time ago and i remember when i was on chop grill masters chef mark murphy said i seen you wrap that pork steak and throw it out there that's like french cooking i told him i said i don't know what you call it but it's going to help preserve that moisture and more of a steaming effect till we get it there so we got this big old pork chop he has come to room temperature set him right in the middle of that aluminum foil get you some half melted Kerrygold butter that set out in the rain for a little bit yep <laughs> and lay you a big old chunk right up there on top. Just go ahead and spread him around. Wrap him up good and tight. We got old Bertha over there blazing with flame we have. And we're just gonna take this and chunk it right on top of the fire we are. Bertha is plenty hot. She is full of mesquite and oak she is. Remember the butter side is on top. We're laying right over the flame. We're gonna let this probably cook about eight minutes on that side. Then we're gonna flip it, cook it some more. While that is cooking, we're gonna mix us up another special sauce that goes on this pork chop. 
Now, before we did a honey garlic on contestant number one, but ooh, this is probably my favorite. Me and Shan been doing this for a while. It is a fig sauce. Yep, you heard me right. Picked it right off the fig tree I did today and made me some what? Fig preserves. Now, this stuff is really good. I could eat it on a hot biscuit, anything like that. It's sort of hard to find at places, but you can just look. Some garlic powder and some of this here W sauce, the Lee and Perrins. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Worcestershire sauce. Pronounce that sauce. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. W sauce. Where's your sister sauce? <laughs> what kind of sauce? <laughs> you can do it. Worcestershire sauce. I got close. So we're gonna add some of that in there. I'm thinking this stuff right here, you be putting it on gravy, you be putting it on your forehead, you be putting it anywhere you can. Well, it was on about eight or nine minutes and then we flipped it and been on about another six or seven. 135, we're Can close. that swivels? Yes, it is, you can see. It is a great tool, it is. Unwrap this any way you can without getting burnt. That's all I can tell you. Well, this side was up just a while ago, so we're gonna turn it down. You can see we already got a little color there. Flames is licking pretty hard, they are. We're gonna come up to about 155 on this. It doesn't take long because really this pork chop has steamed itself nearly done, so don't run off and leave it thinking that it's gonna take a long time because it's not. We done took what I would call $7.65 into a $100 meal. We did. I mean, this is a beautiful thing. It is. Now, you see me on the method over there on the Legacy Grill to where we just indirect heat that. Now, that's going to give you a more smoke flavor on this pork chop. It is going to take you a little longer than this pork chop right here. When you wrap that up in foil, you're like a steaming effect. It's going to cook quicker than this other pork chop did. It's going to be a little more moist, I think. Going to have still that char flavor that you're getting right off the grill, but not the smoky taste that embedded this one throughout. And in the asparagus, you see me just go ahead and just roll that stuff in some oil and some seasoning. Then we done mix this up about a three-fourths of a stick of butter. We done put some garlic powder in there, a little bit of lemon zest, put it back over on the fire, start it up, and we're gonna take this piece right here. Cooked to perfection it is. I am going to take that bite right there. Go ahead and wallow it back around in that sauce. Mm. Which one is that one? The second one? That is the fig sauce. Oh. Mm. Contestant number two off the legacy. Get some of that sauce right up there on the top. Mm. You cannot pick a winner. Oh, you really? cannot, no. You, okay, honestly, do you have a favorite? Mm. I mean, the honey garlic with the soy, it has sort of an Asian flavor to it, but it's so good. But I really think that the fig is probably gonna be my favorite because it, them figs just have a way of bringing out a sweetness that that pork needs so much. Try that bite. Which one's this? This is a fig. I mean, that fig sauce is killer. Yes, it is. Now, I would hate to think that y'all didn't think I ate vegetables. So, we're just gonna go ahead and get us some in when here. When they're right. smothered in butter. Uh-huh. Mm. That is what we call elegant dining, big. And right now, we're just gonna break into a little elegant stool dancing. We are. I mean, oh, oh. I'm gonna do the shimmy shake. You can see see the legs is trying to get off her, but mm, I'm talking, folks. Mm, mm, mm. This, you mean do a double back flip no, off here? No, I'm not no. either. I'm not going to either. You seen how important it was to check that temperature throughout this cooking, and that chef's temp is gonna always get you there. It's gonna tell you the truth. It ain't gonna lie to you. It is a great product. I really thank them people for supporting our channel, I do. And folks, you'll get you a little discount code link down there below to where you can get you one of these because you won't go wrong. It is a great thing, it is. But hey, everything that we use today, some of you still getting lost on comments and saying, I don't know where you're at. 
look down there in them links below the video when we say below i don't mean scroll all the way to the bottom i mean down the below of the description you'll see it there but it is with pride, honor, and great privilege that I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying up there. It is our honor and privilege and we commend you, we do. But something that we gotta do right now that we ain't done yet is we got to feed these puppies who brave the rain with me. You're the best pup. Uh, Big is probably getting about 14 years old and he's got manners. You can't be just walking on in here like you own the place, Cletus. Where's Lou? She's right under the truck box. Lou, there you go. Duker is napping and little bitty her dog, there you go. Well, we hope y'all enjoyed this video because we sure did. Get you some pork chops, get out there to grill. Let me give you a great big old hug. God bless you each and every one and I'll see you down the $100 meal pork chop trail. another video. What are you doing? Worse, Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> I cannot even pronounce none of these words on here hardly. Worcestershire sauce. That's pretty good. That's pretty close for me, it is. Number three, I don't remember what number three was. 